Today we're learning five of my favorite in-camera transitions. But Herman, why in-camera transitions when I could just do it in post? Ever since I started making videos, most transitions I've learned over the years are done in After Effects or Premiere Pro. But because they're done digitally, they give this artificial feeling that not all videos call for. So let's get into the transitions that I like using when I want a more raw and authentic vibe to my video. When I first picked up a camera, setting my shutter speed any lower than 1 over 50 was my favorite way of shooting unusable footage. The motion blur was unnatural, and it just didn't have this cinematic quality that everyone loses their marbles over. But this transition's really been blowing up in the commercial world lately, and I feel like any stylized video that you see nowadays, you can pretty much expect this effect to be used. I usually set my camera to something like 1 over 10, and then just whip it around like I'm swatting a mosquito. Not drinking my blood, not on my watch. The result is a blurry smearing effect that can be jammed in between two shots as a transition. But why is everyone crazy about this transition? I think the reason is flexibility. If you're trying to build tension in your video, it's perfect for creating a sense of contrast. Having a few frames with such high dynamic energy makes the shots around it feel eerily calmer. If you place it between other high dynamic shots, then it ends up maintaining a really good flow. That's the reason that I use it a lot now, and I think you're gonna really love using it too. Next, we've got the rack focus transition. Now, I had a crappy DSLR that I bought off Craigslist when I first started shooting videos, and the focus ring on that kit lens was so loose that getting things in focus was like playing a game of roulette. But this curse became a blessing because it was perfect for my love of making experimental videos. It's as simple as throwing your shot out of focus at the end of your take, and then racking back into focus at the beginning of your next shot. Blurry shots might get you dirty looks in film school, but this was my go-to transition for years when doing promo videos and commercials. Now, if you've watched any Tarantino films, then you'll know what the crash zoom is. You quickly zoom in with your lens to emphasize something dramatically, or quickly zoom out to reveal new information. Now, I first saw this in a video featuring cardistry, which is like an old hobby of mine, and when I first saw it, it just made me really, really want to try it, but it felt impossible with my crappy 18-55 kit lens. So I did what every editor hears as nails on a chalkboard. Just fix it in post. So what I did was stand further away to start my shot on a wide, and then end my take with a zoom in. Then I would start my second shot with a zoom in, and then end on what I wanted to emphasize on. When you stitch the zoom action together in the edit, it creates the illusion of one seamless shot. Shot. The next transition has been my absolute favorite since I started shooting videos, and it's a classic way of adding a sense of urgency. It probably tied in with my hobby of magic tricks because I was just amazed at how the camera's motion blur could cleverly hide a cut. All you gotta do is abruptly pan your camera at the end of your first shot, and then start your second shot with a quick pan in the same direction. Just like what we did with the crash zoom, edit the shots together during the motion, and you've got another sick transition under your belt. All right, here we go, guys. This is <laughs> this last one. I have a love and hate relationship because it's a transition that I loved using all the time, but I just hated how much I was depending on it. Now you don't do anything fancy with your camera, making it probably the most natural and unexpected transition. All you do is have something wipe across your foreground to briefly hide the scene. Start your second shot the same way, and that's where you hide your invisible cut. The best way to do this transition is to justify what actually moves across your screen. You could have someone walk by if it's established that you have a lot of people in the scene. You could also move your camera across another object already in the scene. One thing that I like to do a lot is just move my camera so that it wipes across my subject's body. There are so many variations of this that you can explore, making it one of the funnest in-camera transitions for me. It is so important to remember that these transitions should only be used to enhance your story and not take over it. 